Welcome to The In-Between, where shift happens. This podcast is for anybody who has ever found themselves in that space in between what was and what's going to be. That space where life happens. The moment between where we are and where we're going. That space that is often uncomfortable to sit in. The stuff of life, the ups, the downs, the moments of connection and insight, and the moments where we can't see two steps in front of us. We will ask all the questions, maybe find some answers, and generally work at being okay in the mystery of the in-between. So today's topic is transitions. And what better topic for the beginning of episode one of the in-between than this conversation about transitions? Because that's really what the in-between is, that transition between like where we are, where we're going, uh, you know, where we are, what we want, any. The, the, just the in-between of everything, I think, is all about transitions. And so episode one, transitions, uh, talking about, uh, yeah, life and how that shows up. And so the format for this podcast is going to be, and this is kind of exciting, right, Dan, is that we're going to come up with questions. And Dan has no idea what these questions are going to be. He has no idea where we're going to go. And so we're just going to throw it out there and see what happens. And I know what you example? know, folks. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that the, like the example of what the in-between is, the mystery of the in-between? Uh, so we thought that's a, kind of a fun way to to navigate kind of these conversations because sometimes we don't, all, don't always know. And so this is where we are. We're in the in-between, my friend. Are you ready? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So transitions. Mm, this is a juicy conversation. So when you when you hear the word transitions or uh, transitional or any any like iteration of that word transition, like what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Wow, uh, I think my mind goes to like a whole bunch of different things simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. um, but the the most prominent thought actually is around like death. Like when I hear the word transition, somebody mm-hmm. says transition, and I think being in the kind of spiritual communities that we tend to be around, you know, transition, like we're not going to say death, death doesn't exist or whatever that belief is. Uh, We're going to, we're going to say transition instead. So you're like transitioning from this life to whatever comes after that. And we don't actually like, nobody actually knows what that is. And um, so transition kind of takes on a, it takes on like a weird, like ominous kind of, tone and feeling to it because it's like well we don't really know <laughs> it's a mystery it's like a it, mystery it is yeah it really is and and i think then transition ha- like carries that little bag with it or big bag with it that all that luggage with it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so when we talk about transitions anywhere anywhere else i i, I think that luggage kind of shows up in the background carrying that context with it of like transitioning from this job to the next job or this relationship to no relationship or from this you know this point in life to another point in life i think carries with it that kind of like scary unknown some part of me is dying kind of weirdness to it yeah that's interesting i mean it's interesting that that like that that's the first thing that comes up for you wow i mean that's not exactly what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> what did you think I'd say? Well, I don't know what I thought, but I, but for me, like when I hear the word transition, I'm just going to be honest. I don't do well in transitions. I think because mm. I think exactly what you talked about. It's that mystery, that mystery of like standing like where we are and not knowing exactly what the other side is going to look like, whether the other side of like, death or the other side of a new job or the other side of a new relationship or ending something and beginning something else. And so for me, when I hear the word transitions, I like, I feel like this, like this kind of like shaking in my bones. Like I want to be excited. Oh, yay. Transitions. This is wonderful growth. But really in my brain, I'm saying, oh my God, I don't know what's going to be on the other side. And so for me, when I hear the word transition, I hear like fear, unknown, instability, like all those things. Um, And I guess it is all those things, like the discomfort Mm. of all those things. So I think for me, when I hear transition, I hear discomfort. Like that's the thing that comes up for me. And I think, well, I'd be interested to think, what do you think about this? But I think, isn't that the thing? I think that's like the reason for lots of these conversations that we have is like, 
the reality of this discomfort and then being able to sit in that discomfort. Right. And isn't that like the whole, I mean, in a way, kind of the premise for this entire podcast, right? Like, I think American cult, you know, culture in the United States is like yeah. this thing and then this thing and then this thing. And you kind of progress along this like prescribed timeline where you're checking off boxes or something. And if you're not currently checking off a box, yeah. then you're like something's not right. You're not doing it right or or you're you're failing. You're not successful or whatever. And there is this like discomfort of like not following the prescribed trail, the pres prescribed path. I think there is a, a comfort in kind of knowing what that's supposed to be. I'm putting supposed to in quotes, right? Like whatever that means. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever it should look like. Um, but I think it does kind of point to just how much of life is supposed to operate around like beginning and end points. Like you do this thing until it stops and then you do this other thing until it stops. And it's like so destination living. Yeah. Which like, isn't actually a thing. Like you don't ever stop being, uh, yeah. uh, whatever, like whatever you're were whatever you were doing what that part of your life stays with you it's still a part of you it doesn't actually end so even with death like i don't know i, I guess older traditions and religions and things can um can make it seem like somebody dies and that's it it's done all thoughts about them cease memories are gone and wiped out and like like their life stops existing but like the, their life continues on in memories and your thoughts and the way you right. carry out, uh, you know, the way you live because you knew them. Like, so they, they do, that does continue on. They may not be here in, in like in their physical body anymore, but the idea of them still exists. And I think that can also be applied then to this kind of mile marker living of like, mm -hmm oh, this part of my life is complete because I have reached this mile marker or or whatever. And then now we're in some weird in between because that's done. And it's like, well, no, now, I mean, that you're just the next, it just cycles. You're just in yeah, the next like, phase yeah. of whatever that thing is. Well, I wonder if that, that thinking like leads to this idea of discomfort around transitions, like that step between mm -hmm. one, like, because then it is like this, cut off start it's almost like you're start stop start stop start stop yeah. instead of like this like yeah this kind of flow so i don't know about you i mean like i said i kind of uh expose myself that transitions are hard for me but like what what are, are, is transition hard for you and like what like how why is it hard why is why is it hard why is discomfort hard why is transition hard? <laughs> yeah answer this question for me um I mean, I, I think for a lot of my life, life only existed at the mile markers. Mm -hmm. And so I was always waiting, waiting mm -hmm. for the mile marker to come, waiting to hit the next goalpost or whatever, right? And then you'd but, be happier than you get something. Right, or right yeah, I'll be happy when, I'll have enough money when. when I, if when, if yeah, when. If when, right, right, if when, mm -hmm. if when. Yeah. If this happens, when this happens, then I'll be, I'll be something else when this thing outside of me says I have done enough, made enough, given enough, I don't know, whatever. Are right? enough, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and I think it's uncomfortable and even painful because every time I thought I hit that goalpost, it moved. Oh yeah. So you're like always chasing something. Right. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I was exhausting. always, it, it is exhausting. And it's because I, I was waiting for something else to tell me, I was enough. When I graduate college, I'll be smart enough. When I get my master's, I'll be skilled enough. When I get this job, I'll be, I'll have made it enough. When I get whatever, I'll blank enough. But those things never actually provided me any sort of like mm -hmm. enoughness, <laughs> you know, to, to really like land and be like, okay, yeah, now, now is it right. When in reality, the only thing that can tell me that I am enough is me, right? Like nothing outside of me can convince me that I'm enough. Yeah. And so I think when I first started realizing that, not that it made the transitions really any easier, but, 
<laughs> yeah, I guess because I guess I mean I, that's kind of a trick question, right? I think like the goal is not easy. So to, yeah, right. But but there was a context of understanding mm. around what was happening, and I was like, oh, I'm waiting for something else to tell me mm. something about me that only I can yeah. tell me and realize. Like I already was, and I was always enough. Right. And so the goalposts were never going to be the thing, but I was convinced, you know, life convinced me that if, and when you get the thing, then life will mm. blah, blah, blah. And you'll be and feel and experience enough. And that, that wasn't it. That's not it. Right. And so I think there is like an inherent discomfort and maybe even pain in that idea of like yeah. always looking outside of ourselves for, the next thing for the enoughness for you know feeling loved for feeling full and complete or whatever and it's never it's never going to do it never it will never it's do a it trick, right it's a, yeah. it's a trick so yeah. well, i guess it's not me of i would say not even a trick it's a lie that we yeah. we collectively have bought into like and i feel that when you were talking about it, it's like it's this this never ending a cycle of disappointment or not enough, right? So it's a never ending yeah. thing. And so then there comes that exhaustion from that. And then yeah. also this idea that things are supposed to be easy or that, right? right? But also you're supposed to work really hard. Right. So it's so. like, well, the thing is like, you know, growth and any sort of movement, any sort of evolution, which we're always doing, whether we want to or not, honestly, we're always moving. Uh, you know, emotionally, physically, yeah. spiritually, intellectually, I mean, we're, we're always moving because what we have today is different than what we had yesterday, right? This, we, are, we are the farthest that we've ever been at this very point, right? right? And so then tomorrow will be the, the next step and the next step. And so I think for me, I get in this cycle that transition is supposed to be easy or just moving or growth is supposed to be easy or this kind of like... Um, mm. I don't know, you sit on your yoga mat or whatever and poof. It just is this, yeah. this easy transition. And I think that's a lie we've been sold to. Um, and I would like to return that and get my money back. Um, <laughs> this idea of ease and discomfort, like we've, we've created mm -hmm. these polar experiences, one to embrace, one to avoid. Yeah. And dare I say, it just goes back to the wholeness of that, both of those experiences, that there is growth and value in both of those things. And so transition is always going to be uncomfortable at some stage. It's always going to be mystery. It's always going to be whatever. And I think maybe, maybe the, the, the code breaker is just allowing it to be, I don't know, easier said than done though, but I don't. Well, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's not like I've got a handle on any of this at all. <laughs> I mean, it's very easy to say it. Like, yeah, I mean, I can yeah. say it, but yes. Yeah. Just I totally to understand what is. It is. And in this moment, you know, when I, I'm in a transition, I'm like, uh, this shit stinks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I would like to not be experiencing this. Yeah, this can be done now. Thanks. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> you know, but I think also it wouldn't mean anything if it wasn't like if everything just posted along all the time and there weren't any distinctions between mm. how I was and how I am or how it was and how it's now or whatever. I, I, I don't think it would mean nearly as much because there is a sense, like I don't really have a sense of arrival in most things where there's transition because it does, when you recognize the process, you, it does feel swirly. <laughs> Enjoying um, the swirl. Yeah. But I can look back, you know, I mean, this is, new year, right? We're recording this in the very beginning of a new year. And I can look back on the last year and go, holy shit. Yeah. Wow. There's so much change and evolution that happened just even for me mm. in this last year. And most of it, I can't really pinpoint when it happened. It's not like, oh, and this day on this time, this changed and boof, it was different. Like there was this swirly mess of a transition that was happening. And I can probably like name i could create names for certain points along that journey yeah. like oh in this period in this in this two-month time period 
yeah, that's kind of when that started to shift or change for me. Or, you know, I went and visited family in this period and this thing happened and that was different. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> um, but there, it's not like there's a pinpoint in time where that thing happened and recognizing like, oh, that was, I could name that as probably a transition period for this thing to help like my own brain just kind of categorize the meaning behind what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, I mean, I, in a way it's kind of arbitrary. I, we could pick, it was a month. Was it two months? Was it six months that this happened? Has this been happening for years? You know? Right. I mean, it's hard to see when you look back on it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing swirls into the next. And I think a lot of those things feel meaningful because of that transitional period, because I can go back and like categorize, oh man, those two months were really, those, those felt really hard to work through yeah. that life thing. And but then there was, there was, was there meaning? Cause it was hard. Was it hard? Cause there was meaning. Is it both? I don't know. You know, but like, <laughs> I think there is something to be said for working through the challenge of it. Cause it wouldn't have meant anything if it wasn't yeah. challenging, if it wasn't hard, it just would have been, one thing at, like it just life would have just been happening it wouldn't have been important and and also i think the other way around it was meaningful because it was important yeah you know it's interesting hearing you you talk you know just about like transitions and just giving an example of your own like i don't know past years reflecting on that it's like it's interesting how in transitions i think that there is a push to come home to ourselves or, or, or however you want to do it, to come back to ourselves or this greater awareness of who we are. And we experience that through transitions. And what popped into mind is like my own transition, mm -hmm. you know, my own, like as a non-binary trans person, my own transition, uh, you know, my medical transition and all the things that go along with that. And it, it has this, and, and there's challenges in that, right? There's challenges, lots of different challenges, physical challenges and societal challenges, especially in the world and we live right now and some of the yeah. things that trans folks are um, experiencing. But it's it does have this like looking back on all the the points of that transition, like coming home to myself. Mm. I mean, like more and more of who I am. And I think that that is maybe the the prize of sitting <laughs> in discomfort, if, if, if there's a prize, I don't know, the, the prize of sitting in some of that discomfort or being less attached to have always having to be comfortable or things always having to be easy or, or, or us never being challenged is that we actually, through that pushing, hmm. become more of ourselves. I mean, I, I hate to use the, the caterpillar and the butterfly because I think that's overused, but I think it's kind of true, right? Yeah that kind of yeah. squidgy mushy that yeah. you kind of have to go through in order to then kind of become more of what you were born to be. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does. And, and, and the change from the caterpillar to the butterfly wouldn't be as meaningful if it didn't have to go through that like crazy liquefying process. Like if the, if the caterpillar just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel that. If I can feel the squishiness of that. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Talk about squidgy middle. Yeah, for um, real. Yeah, I mean, if the caterpillar just sprouted wings one day and just flew off, I was like, "Oh shit, I'm a butterfly. Cool." Like that wouldn't. I, I don't know. Would it? Would it really mean much? And we'd have like pretty ugly butterflies. We have these like fuzzy little worms with wings floating around. I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think there is a, I don't know, is this true for all transitions? Um, you know, I, I suppose, but like, I think there is that like shedding in a way mm -hmm. um, where life kind of has a way of rubbing up against our rough edges and we rub up against the rough edges of others and, and attract people into our lives that have rough edges that our rough edges need. <laughs> <laughs> to bump up against and yeah you know sh kind of shed off the the things we've um started carrying around i, I know it brings us this idea of, i've been thinking a lot lately about like the collective unlearning mm. like it feels like that's what life is about 
I'm learning think, for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, right. Like the um I think there was a lot of collective learning that happened for a very long time that mm. just kind of pointed in what seemed like or it, it the idea was trying to point in a very singular direction. I don't know that anyone was necessarily pointing it that way, but right. I think the unlearning is recognizing that like life doesn't and never has pointed in any one direction, right? It's like it is this 360 experience that needs that that needs to like really move in every direction, you know. And I think that's kind of the unlearning is unlearning those um the shoulds un, like collectively, not just like as an individual, what my right. life should look like, but what what life what we want life to look like as a whole, rather than what I was taught my life should look like, mm. or you were taught your life should look like or whatever. Right. right? I think there's all, unlearning all of these, like, you know, that, well, the, just the whole idea of life should be easy. Life should be comfortable. You should be, and if you're not happy all the time, then you're, you're wrong. And right. Like that ain't it. <laughs> and there's, I mean, there's Lord, there's a uh, discomfort in the unlearning too, especially if you thought something and now you have to like, yeah relearn yeah. something so so how do you sit in the discomfort this is the million dollar question mm -hmm. like yeah. how do we how Un i don't know that there's one answer Un i think we all have w whatever our our answer is or half answers i have a bunch of half answers to that i think but like it, how do we sit in the discomfort how do we like yeah um i think my short answer is with people oh, short answer uh-huh it's, it's it's with people I sit in the discomfort with people yeah. and I don't mean like with them in their discomfort, but also that, um, but like I have people in my life that I can sit with and work through that discomfort Yeah. or, or feel or eventually get to a feeling of being okay sitting in the discomfort. Cause you know, I mean, we all have those uh, you know, the older parts of our brain that are like, Alert, alert, exit, <laughs> flee, flee, yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's not like, I don't know that we really get to a point of enjoying being in the discomfort, but I think, again, it's like that context when we can understand, okay, something's happening, something's moving, something's shifting, there's change coming, and... Um, I, I personally believe that life itself is evolving in a direction to experience more things that are happening for us than against us, even though it doesn't always look that way. Mm -hmm. um, collectively. And so when, when things are happening that are really shitty, it's because we're collectively allowing things to happen that are really shitty and we need to stop doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but that shift that that's a total shift from like the cultural belief of like good versus evil, because like the good mm -hmm. versus evil is like these people are good and these people are evil and the good should win. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. it's like no 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 we need to we for I mean for me the context shift of like life is happening for itself allows me to better sit in the discomfort when that shit is going down to look at it and go like, okay, what is this telling us? Yeah. What is this asking of us? What are we being asked to become? And, you know, there's a lot of stuff in life right now that's asking us to stop with the nonsense that like, stop repeating this crazy stuff and, and stop, I don't know, living like blindly. I don't know. We don't need to get into all that right now, but I, I think the, con <laughs> the context of, you know, understanding the context of, yeah, of transition, understanding that life, uh, you know, kind of like unfolds in a way that's happening for its own self, for it, for the evolution of life itself, um, does help kind of point the compass a little bit yeah. to at least know, oh, there is movement in this transition. It's not static. It's not forever. It's not like, it's not the death that my brain wants me to think it is. Yeah, it's like this is now. This is not forever. Yeah, this is right. This is right now. Yeah. So anyway, so my short answer is with people. <laughs> I was like, was that a short answer? No, I'm teasing. No, I mean, I think, and I 
let me, I, I love that answer because isn't it interesting? Like this idea, because, you know, my instinct and in discomfort is to withdraw. And, and that's not everyone's instinct. And, and sometimes it, I, I know I'm not alone in that instinct um, because I think it, it is this still uh, unlearning, this idea of, have to go it alone. Um, if you don't have the answer, then something's wrong. Or yeah. if you're not fit for human consumption on any given day, then you just need to like recluse or whatever. So this is kind of, if you can't show up hundred percent, then don't show up at all. That's yeah. that sort of mentality that I have absorbed, I think. And I love that. Yes. When, when you said with people, like I felt my nervous system, like, uh, yeah. like decompress because I think, Another lie, another lie yeah. <laughs> that we have been sold that we need to return to sender is this idea that we have to go it alone. And I think especially this idea of transitions, I think especially highlights that, yeah. that um, idea that we're collectively, we're always in transition. That is just the nature of life. And so we collectively all have a frame of reference for this experience. Yeah. And so why not collectively began to walk with each other through this experience because we're all having the same experience, honestly. I mean, it, it has different hair and, you know, different legs and different, you know, whatever, uh, or, you know, but it is this, this collective experience that we're always in transition. And so we are always, we can all like resonate with discomfort of that. And so then why not tap into this idea that, oh, okay, your transition may look different from mine, but you know, you know what it feels like and it sometimes does not feel good. Yeah. And then sometimes it feels great. Right. So it's, it, you know, it just depends on the circumstance. And so I love that reminder of leaning into that, which can be hard sometimes. And I think does yeah. take a bit of, a bit of unlearning. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we talked a lot about the squidgy middle, which I like to call the squidgy middle, which is kind of like this in between um, this kind of mystery and, goop and like whatever of life, which, you know, is kind of like the whole premise of, of our conversations in this podcast. Um, so what's on the other side? What's on the other side of transition? Wow. Because um, there is no side, right? Because the transition from one side to the next. So, you know, what, yeah. I don't know, what is the feeling of the other side of that? Well, you know, I, I and I kind of spoke to this before a little bit. I, I don't usually recognize when I've gotten to the other side until way later. Mm. Mm, <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, I can feel that. <laughs> like, how, how did I get here? Yeah. Um, and I, and I think part of that might be at least attempting to trust that life is happening for itself and not against itself. Like life is not destructive. And so there is at least an attempt to trust mm. that that is what's happening. Mm. And so it's not, I'm not like free floating through it, having no idea what's going on, but I think because I, I am active in the being and the doing of life while subconsciously having some level of trust that it's happening for me and for itself that mm -hmm. it it were it, it starts to work even the things that feel really shitty yeah um you know i mean I, as an example um you know when my dad passed away in 2018 that was like probably the hardest thing i think i've ever gone through and it was months of like feeling like I couldn't function in society. I mean, literally like, like eight or yeah. nine months and then like barely like getting on my feet again. Yeah. I can look back at that and see how that was like some of the greatest personal learning and personal growth that I've ever experienced. And, and so, um, yeah, what does it feel? I don't know that it's always been great. I don't know that the other side has always been great, except that, it has always been like an evolutionary process of, of coming mm -hmm. out in a, in a way that is more for my authentic self than I was before. Mm -hmm. And there is a freedom and a relief in 
feeling like you can be more of your authentic self. Yeah. For, for me, feeling like I could be more authentically me did feel very liberating when compared to before, in, in a way that I, I didn't even recognize I was carrying around before that. I don't know that we can, right? I don't know that we can recognize yeah. always until we can look back on that. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked about like trusting, you know, that things are working and all that. Stuff. Yeah. You know, it reminds me, you know, you know, the trust the process. And then the meme that says, <laughs> does the process know that we are all trusting it? Yeah. And I mean, and that's funny. And it's like this. And also. <laughs> and also. And so what's interesting is, is that the process in that meme, which is funny, is, is this process or whatever we're calling it. Sometimes our language can, can, um, make it seem that it's something outside of us. Like the process is something outside of us that we're trusting in. Yeah, yeah. But I think, right. I right. think that the process is us, that mm. we are the process that we are trusting, right? We, we are like not, mm. the process yeah. is not something separate from us. The process is something that is us, yeah. us individually, us collectively, us like, yeah. The span of all life itself, yeah. like that is the process. Life is the process. Hmm. We are the process. And so I think that sometimes in transitions, there is an instinct, and maybe it's, this is just me, that sometimes I don't trust the process because I don't trust myself. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Right. And so it's right. like, yeah. I think sometimes transitions also are this like invitation to trust ourselves more, hmm. trust our intuition, trust our... The, the the thing that thing that you can't really name but you know what it is that little yeah. that little feeling or for me it shows up as a feeling kind of in the center of my body and so it's like it's an invitation with each transition to like trust that more i don't know right. if that makes sense yeah but yeah, i'm just yeah, yeah. kind of like yeah. toying with this idea that the process is not separate from us it is us you know that yeah talk about an unlearning yeah for real a collective unlearning of being separate from anything yeah being separate from each other being separate from life being separate from the planet we live on or the being whatever uh but what what also comes to mind is like the quickening of life in a way right because I, I think mm -hmm. you know going back to that whole idea of comfort i think it was a lot easier in some ways 60, 70, 80 years ago when the the like major transitions in life happened a lot further apart. And mm -hmm. over the last, well, forever, I mean, I think the the mm -hmm. speed at which life began evolving has just quickened and quickened and quickened and quickened. Yeah. And, and so for a period of time, it may have seemed from a certain perspective that you could go it alone in life. And in fact, you probably should, right? Like, I mean, that was pushed so hard. Yeah this whole rugged individualism thing, which I'm kind of feeling is maybe another episode. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, a whole don't give it away. yeah, don't give it yeah, away. Yeah. But, but since then this, it just, this evolution, the, the, the quickening of, of transitions yeah. from this thing to this thing, to this thing has just continuously um, increased. And I, and I think we're at a point where like, we didn't get it collectively, like we didn't get it. And so we ended up creating the next thing and the next thing and the next thing faster and faster and faster because we're, we are having to realize that we have to rely on each other. Mm, yeah. Like we must be in the thing together. We must be doing the thing together. We, we have to figure out that we're not actually separate from each other, from the effects, from the world, from the pollution from the ocean, from whatever, like we're not actually separate from these things. And like, I mean, like you said, like the, we are, we collectively are, we singularly are the process. We actually are the whole thing that there is this interconnectedness. Um, and yet I think right now we're kind of facing like generations worth of being, you know, if you lived like 60 or 70 years in this mindset of, go it alone or in my, in any singular mind, in any mindset, that's like, this is the way. And yeah. then all of a sudden life in every direction is like, no, no, nope. no, it's not. Play again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reroll. Um, <laughs> like I, I can imagine that being really 
challenging and, and, and painful really. Right. Whereas like, I, I was kind of born into like change, 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 change. change. Like it just kept picking up, picking up, picking up. Yeah. Uh, and it was like change became kind of the norm. And so there was never a, that comfort of this is the way for pretty much anything. And, and, and so, yeah, like, uh, you know, what, what's on the other side, I think what is on the other side of all that is like, we all finally realize that we're so interconnected that like everything we do impacts everybody impacts yeah. everything. And I, and I think we, we figure that out. I think life figures that out. Hopefully we're a part of that. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, like <laughs> kind of reminds me of like the whole, like, um, you know, save the planet thing mm -hmm. from like, I don't know. We were kids, I guess, but like the planet's going to be fine. Like we don't need to save the planet. We need to save living conditions for ourselves. We need to save ourselves. Right. I think it's that kind of thing. where like, we don't need to, save yes we do need to look at our effects on the planet and the planet's doing what the planet needs to do in order to preserve itself right. we may not be right. <laughs> you know and i think that's it i think it's that that realization of just how interconnected we are and then hopefully the living the positive effects of <laughs> that realization well, and I think like this conversation on, I've enjoyed this conversation on transitions because I think, yes. well, for me, it gives me this like, uh, okay, I'm not the only one that this is challenging, <laughs> right? That we're all experiencing this. And so I think that that is like normalizing these challenging conversations, normalizing that the in-between, like that squidgy middle uh, transition, the goo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's where discomfort happens, but also that's where growth happens too. Mm. And sometimes that's hard to see when you're in it. And so I think that's the beauty of this conversation of transitions. And I feel like that we've answered, we, we, we have come up with some answers, don't you think? I mean, not that the goal maybe, of this is like a lot of answers, yeah. because I think that yeah. we got to release that too, right? That, that I didn't have to have all the answers. But for me, I feel a little bit, whew, yeah. more settled in my bones a little bit around transition. well there's there's something to take away immediately like yeah sure there's this big long yeah. I, I recognize what i'm talking about it's this really probably far off very lofty goal but there is like you're saying i think this immediate takeaway of like oh yeah right i can do this now in this yeah. transition and be okay so i think like the biggest like summary takeaway from this conversation is uh, kind of what you said, this idea of transitions, that we don't have to do it alone. Yeah. That yeah. we can lean into our connection. So I think like the takeaway is transitions, colon, leaning into connection. Um, <laughs> right, because that kind of can help us in the in-between. Yeah. So I've enjoyed this conversation. I hope yeah. you've enjoyed this conversation. And this is so exciting. There's so, so many conversations to be had. And we're going to try to have as many of them as possible. So until next time, we'll catch you in the in-between. Nobody really enjoys being in the in-between, but thanks for being here anyway. We may not have found all of the answers, but certainly some. And maybe more importantly, a little shift has happened. Because that is really what it's all about. Learning to be curious, authentic, and yes, maybe even a tad bit vulnerable. And the beauty of it all is that we are not alone in the in-between. So until next time, we hope a lot of shift happens.